Hello everyone, I hope you're all keeping safe and lockdown's been uh, treating you well. Thank you for joining this ITT Future You panel discussion, Are You Industry Ready? Today our focus will be on how to prepare best for a career in the travel industry. Uh, with the help of our panellists, Jody, Carla and Matt, we will cover off different stages of the career journey from identifying your very first role through the application process and CVs, interviews and assessment centres. So I'm very excited to introduce our panel who have a great wealth of experience between them. Um, so if you could all introduce yourselves, please, that would be great. Carla, if you'd like to go first. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Louis, for involving me today. It's great to be, to be here. Um, I'm Carla. I'm a career consultant and uh, I'm based in London, but I work with uh, students and young professionals from uh, pretty much all around the world to help them understand their career path uh, and the best options uh, for them on the job market. Thank you, Carla. And Matt? Uh, hi Lou, thanks for uh, having me today. Uh, so I'm uh, Matt Pink, I'm the Customer Experience Manager at EasyJet Holidays. Uh, and before that I was at Thomas Cook for around two years, uh, for a few months as UK Online Customer Experience Manager, uh, and before that on the uh, Future Leaders Commercial Graduate Programme. Great stuff, thank you Matt. And Judy? Hi, yeah, thank you for setting this up today. I am Jodie, the Head of Overseas for Party Hard Travel. Um, so as you can tell, we specialise in party holidays for the youth travel market. Um, my job is all the operations overseas and more importantly for you guys is the recruitment and management of the overseas staff. Fantastic. Thanks, Jody. Um, and finally, I'm Louis. I'm commercial lead at Whitbread. So I look after the commercial strategy for hotels across the UK and also manage the commercial framework for our new Premier Plus rooms as well. I'll get that plug in there. Um, so now we've uh, introduced ourselves, let's crack on with our first key theme of today, uh, which is identifying the right role. So um, Jody, let's start with you. Tell us about your route into the travel industry and was a career in travel a premeditated choice? Was it a deliberate decision? Was it something that you'd always wanted um, to do? Uh, yes, yeah, so I wanted to be an accountant, which is what I did at uni. Um, I started realising that wasn't for me. I got into travel from doing uh, the overseas, so summer placement, being a rep uh, throughout university so every summer. Um, and that just kind of made me realise a passion for the industry and also to see the opportunity that I didn't really know um, before. And when I did actually leave uni, I went into the accountancy industry for a bit and I soon realised that the travel industry has so much more opportunity, especially for young people um, to kind of grow and learn and develop than any other industry I've seen anyway. Fantastic. Thank you for that. So you went to university and studied accountancy. Was that, was that your plan long term and then travel became your passion? Uh, yeah. I guess so. I still use accountancy uh, nearly every day, I guess, in what I do, the skills that I learned from university. Um, but yeah, I think... <laughs> that, that's great to hear. So even though you didn't study travel and tourism, you're using those skills that you built at university in your everyday job with Party Hard Travel. Yeah, <laughs> every day. Um, I mean, I guess when you're in uni, you don't really get, uh, for me, doing accounting, it wasn't really, you do this industry, this industry, or this industry. It was kind of, I didn't realise that until a bit later, that there are different industries, but there's still a lot of opportunities inside them. You don't have to be a air hostess because you're in the travel industry. There is a lot of job roles across the board. <laughs> Great stuff. Thanks, Judy. And uh, Matt, I know you went to university as well. Um, you didn't study travel and tourism, but you applied for the uh, Thomas Cook Graduate Programme. Did you know at university that travel was a long-term plan for you? Uh, no, definitely not. So I uh, graduated in uh, politics and international relations in 2016, which is a course I specifically chose because I wanted transferable skills. I didn't really know where exactly I wanted to go. Um, and that's a, an attitude I think I took into my early career. So I experimented with some roles in sales, public affairs, uh, but I was always quite keen for a, a graduate scheme, preferably in a larger company where I could rotate. Um, primarily to suss out my interest long term, but also to gain a fair bit of cross-functional experience. Uh, so I must apply for around 30 graduate schemes at the end from uh, companies that produce chocolate bars to those that run theme parks, which I think gives you an indication of how unsure I was on industry. 
but I was Centrelink for the Thomas Cook graduate scheme, as you point out, by, by my mum, I think. Uh, and I knew it was right for me pretty much immediately when I read the description. Um, it kind of occurred to me there's nothing more exciting than travel. And it hadn't crossed my mind that making holidays for a living could actually be a job. Uh, so as soon as I heard about it, I sought it out quite intensely. Uh, luckily got through to the assessment centre and got a, a really good feeling about the company and, and what I wanted to do. Um, and luckily my application was successful and uh, I haven't stopped loving travel ever since. So uh, thanks for sending me the link, Mum. <laughs> Great stuff. Thanks, Matt. I think there's a really important point about persistence there. You said you applied for, for 30 different programmes um, and eventually you found the right one um, and uh, it's worked out really well for you. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Carly, you don't directly work in the travel industry, but you help people to identify their first roles. Um, so could you tell us about the advice you'd give to people who are looking for their first role? Yeah, I think um, my, my suggestion is really to um, start working as early as possible, maybe even at university if you have some spare time, because it's, uh, it's very important that you try different things before committing maybe to, to a graduate program. Uh, because maybe you have some ideas of what you, you would like to do, but then in reality, you might like different things. So uh, it's very important that you have different experiences. Don't underestimate uh, those experiences that you might do while you're, while you're studying. For sure. Thank you, Carla. Appreciate that. So, um, with Carla, Jody, and Matt there, you've all secured your first jobs through different means. Um, so uh, Matt with a graduate program, uh, Carla via internship opportunity, and uh, Jody with an overseas placement. So I think it's important when identifying your first role in travel to consider all entry points. Um, and to Carla's point, um, take a risk. If you see something that you like, explore it uh, and go after it. I know in my experience, my, my first taste of travel was work experience. Um, similar to Matt, I, um, I had to be quite persistent. So I went around knocking on uh, different travel agent stores, I think about 30 or 40. Um, and there was one travel agency which gave me the, gave me the opportunity to work for free um, for four weeks. And uh, off the back of that, I managed to secure a graduate program. So um, I think the key is, uh, is, is really persistence when, when looking for your first role as well. Um, so now moving on a little bit to the impact of COVID-19 on the job market. Um, Matt, if you'd like to take this first question, what would you say to people who are strongly considering a career in travel but are concerned about the impact COVID-19 might have on the jobs available? So I think the first thing I'd say is uh, don't be too disheartened. I think uh, you'll struggle to find an industry right now that's not been negatively impact, uh, impacted by the effects of uh, COVID-19 in some capacity, apart from uh, maybe those that make hand sanitizer. So while my career in travel so far has been short, I think from speaking to colleagues around the industry, it, it's clear it will always be susceptible to peaks and troughs and will always be impacted by political, geographical, and as we found out more recently, medical factors. Um, but there is always a trend and the, and the trend is that travel does bounce back. I think if we look before all of this, consumer demand for travel was at an all time high. Uh, there's, there's such an emotion around the connection that travellers have with packages they book. Um, and that's one of the joys really of working in the industry. And, and the challenge for us now in travel is to transition that to reassurance and bring customers back to travel. Um, and speaking personally, from working at EasyJet Holidays, it's been brilliant to work on uh, some of our work around commitments in light of COVID-19, uh, travel policies, new help centres to advise customers. Um, and I think that's where it helps with resilience in that we can be sure that eventually customers will come back and, and book with us again. And so from a job market perspective, I'd say while it's tough, I think the reassurance should come from these companies will look to recruit and grow again as that demand does return and grows again. Um, but in the meantime, I think my, my advice would be find as many transferable skills as you can and adapt to the situation as best as possible. I think the more you can learn from industries outside of travel and bring that in, the better. Uh, and some of the best ideas I've heard since I joined the industry have come from those that have entered the industry new or from different industries. So if you can bring something different to a table and in what is now a very competitive, uh, competitive climate, uh, then that will stand you in really good stead. Sure. Thank you for that, Matt. So um, a key team there seems to be around transferable skills. Um, Carla, and I, I know you're, you're an advocate of, of people um, looking for additional qualifications. Uh, what would you say to people who um, are looking for a job in the current climate? 
Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the travel industry is uh, been highly impacted, like Matt was saying. So if you, if your dream job is not available now, anyway, my my suggestion would be uh, to to do something anyway to. Uh, take advantage of this time to do maybe different jobs where you can always learn something. Uh, you have to be proactive, you can undertake uh, qualifications, it could be uh, a language course, it could be project management, anything that might be helpful for you when uh, the job market is ready again and you can start applying for uh, for a job in the travel industry. So uh, don't sit still be flexible, be open-minded, and yeah, take advantage of this uh, time as much as possible. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, Carla. Uh, I know some of my colleagues are currently on, on furlough at the moment, and uh, they are channeling their energies into additional qualifications uh, in order to upskill and look for that next step in the, uh, in the career ladder. So thank you for that, Carla. Uh, Jody, you recruit um, overseas reps for Party Hard Travel. Would you agree that an additional qualification, such as a language, for example, uh, would help an applicant stand out? Uh, yeah, I just think any extra skills really are going to help you stand out, whatever you got, put it in the CV. Um, but definitely a language. But also, when I was first applying for overseas placements, I was a little bit put off thinking like, oh, they've asked preferable to have a different language. But don't be put off, still apply like with us. It is very rare that we have somebody that can speak, well, not just speak a language, but speak a language of the resorts we operate into. Um, so we have one rep at the moment. She's amazing. She's such an asset to the team and has been for years. But don't be put off if you don't have one, but use this time to get some extra skills if you can. <laughs> Great stuff. Thanks, Jodie. And how do you think about COVID-19 uh, as a whole? How will that impact the job market in China? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of kind of positives and negatives. Obviously, the main negative being the uncertainty uh, at the moment with a lot. Um, kind of like the customers asking what's going on. You might as well go and ask Boris. Um, but no, um, I mean positives. We have changed a lot and used this time to develop a lot of things. Uh, we've got two uh, new apps going ahead. So our Party Hard app, which we were planning on anyway. Uh, so it's kind of pushed that forward uh, so the customers can kind of have better communication with the staff in destination all via the app. Uh, we also have an easy order app, uh, which means that all of our venues, uh, event suppliers, the hotels, if they want it, we're just kind of putting it across the destinations uh, to enhance that social distancing. They can order everything they would need and want from this app, drinks, food, uh, across the resort and um, so that's really helpful and I think it is going to open up kind of a lot of advances in technology for the industry. Um, also in terms of recruitment I mean next summer 2021 sales are already doing really well uh, so I know if it carries on like that then we are going to have to recruit more staff um, and then for this summer we did a recent survey which showed us 80% of uh, our customer base that responded to it actually would feel comfortable traveling abroad with us this summer. Uh, so kind of don't rule out this summer just yet, I guess. Um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Fantastic. That's really reassuring to hear. I think a couple of points in there. The first one around innovation. So uh, even though there are undoubtedly um, a lot of negatives to, to the COVID-19 situation on the travel industry, it, it can lead to new innovations. Um, as you mentioned with with, with party hard travel there. Um, and also interesting to see that confidence is returning into the market, not just for next summer, but for this summer um, as well. So you might get to a stage where you may start to look for more reps next summer, um, for example, would that be fair to say? Uh, yes, definitely. We've still got, obviously, can't really recruit again because we've got the whole lot from last year. But if we look like we do need more than what we would have recruited for this summer, uh, then yeah, definitely we'll open up again for next year. Great stuff. Thank, thank you for your thoughts on that, guys. Um, and now I'm just going to move on to the next theme, which is around securing the role. So this uh, section will look at CV and interview advice. Um, so let's delve a little bit deeper into that application process. Carla, you specialise in career consulting. Um, what's your, what are your top tips for writing a CV or cover letter? Yeah, um... 
obviously uh, every company uh, might have different requirements, but my uh, general tip would be to uh, customize your applications. So to read carefully the job description, uh, do not send out your application randomly because that would be a waste of your time and recruiters uh, don't really like to, to read these applications that are clearly a copy and paste and there is nothing personal on, uh, on those. So uh, try to be very clear on what you can offer that the company is looking for that is relevant uh, for the company that you're applying to. Um, try to stand out sometime, somehow with a catchy cover letter, um, have some unique points, um, be very clear on who you are, what are your skills, and why you would be a good fit for the company, uh, because they receive hundreds of applications uh, within a, a few days after posting the job address. So um, make sure you, you know why you're applying and why they should choose you. Thanks, Carla. So tailor your skill set to the company um, and what, what the company is essentially asking for as well. Um, and how about the interview process? How do you prepare for that? What's your advice? Oh, for, for the interview, um, what I find is that a lot of um, candidates underestimated, uh, so maybe they're very prepared on the, let's say, more technical side, but you also have to be very prepared about the company, about the competitors, uh, the history of the company, their mission, their vision, their projects. Uh, you have to study like you're going for an exam, so take that seriously. Um, and also be prepared to, to speak about yourself, uh, your weaknesses, your strengths, your goals. Um, these are the questions that are more um, challenging for candidates normally. So take the time to practice, to prepare. Uh, you can find a lot of information online. So before an interview, you, you can go on Glassdoor, uh, rate my placement to, um, to get more information about interview process. Great stuff. Lots of good stuff in there. Thank you, Carla. And Jody, um, you're in a great position because you've assessed hundreds of people for overseas rep roles in the past in both interview and assessment centre format. Which applicants really stand out to you and, and why did they do so? Um, I think it's the same as what Carla was saying. The ones that go beyond with the research, go beyond the website. Uh, we know what's on there. Uh, we like it when you pull things from different areas. Uh, as well it's great I think standing out making things different the same kind of um, I'm an interesting motivated individual kind of go beyond that please um, and also like some of them so we do uh, you have to submit a video the candidates that can really try and get their personality across in these stages really stand out too um, and then yeah on to the we do assessment centers those are filled with so many different tasks throughout the day. Um, through that confidence is really important and kind of seeing how, uh, understandably with us, you might not be as confident, but with the peers in the room, we want to see how they're all interacting together. Um, and then also there are, are a lot of different stages. So it's all about that prep. For example, one minute they'll be doing a welcome meeting to group tasks, and then they all this year have um, had a private individual interview with our CEO. So it's kind of preparing for all areas uh, when you do that. Great stuff. <laughs> that thanks, Jodie. And uh, Matt, you have uh, experience on the other side of the coin. So you applied for the graduate program at Thomas Cook and the final stage of that was an assessment centre, which you were successful in. What advice would you give to applicants in that assessment centre situation? You're absolutely right. So uh, I've had to do uh, a few assessment centres during graduate scheme application processes, and it's, it's quite a standard requirement normally. Uh, normally about step six if the first five of those weren't enough. Um, but I think I'd really echo the thoughts that Jodie and Carla have shared there. Uh, the first really around knowing the stuff, and, and that's not just where the company's been, but really where it's going. I think the more you can read up on latest results, press statements, any kind of snippets you can find in the news, the better because that'll help you understand the ambition of the company and the direction it's going in. Um, and if you can understand that, you'll know whether it's the right fit for you, but also whether, uh, or I guess, how you can tailor your approach to ensure they know you're the right fit for them. 
uh, confidence, as Joni touched upon as well, I think is really key. So as part of these uh, assessment centres, you'll normally do a group activity. Uh, and I think it's really key to stand out in the right way. Um, they're looking for leaders for people that aren't too overbearing. So if you can try and guide the direction of the task in the way that you want while uh, bringing people on board and engaging everyone in the group, uh, you know, maybe bringing in those that are a little bit quieter, um, that will certainly stand you in a, in a really good position. And then finally, I think networking at these centres is really key as well. I think uh, you'll find that people from all across the business will come to these assessment centres to, to speak to potential candidates. Um, and that's the opportunity really to quiz them, you know, talk to them about what they like about the company, advice they give to new starters and so on. Uh, and if you can set a good impression with them, um, you know, these will be the people that will normally be A, either marking your performance or B, advising those that are. So, you know, it will always help stand you out if you can have a good conversation with those people. Um, but I think finally, uh, the last thing I'd say is uh, I think it can take practice. I think uh, I performed pretty terribly at the first two or three that I did. So I just recommend relaxing into it, trying to show them what you can do and you know the rest will follow and something will click eventually. Great stuff. Thank you for that, Matt. Um, and really, really reassuring to hear as well that you know you might have gone through a couple of assessment centers, but don't be disheartened. Keep going, be persistent. Uh, so thank you for sharing, uh, thank you for sharing that story. Uh, so I think we've got some really top tips from uh, Jody, Carla uh, and Matt there on the application process. Number one, match your skills to the JD and be clear on what you can offer. I know coming out of university and looking for my first job in travel, I didn't really know what I was good at. Um, I think a good place to start there would be to, to read a book called Strength Finders 2.0, which really kind of highlights your strengths and how you can build on those. Uh, secondly, do your research on the company. As Carla said, prepare for an interview or an assessment center like it's an exam. Read the company website, the latest press articles, ensure you know where the company is heading. And thirdly, draft an interview pack of questions and try to preempt activities um, at assessment centers. You can find the methods, as Carla mentioned, on, on Glassdoor as well. So that concludes our panel discussion for today. And um, thank you to uh, Carla, Matt and Jody so much uh, for your time, really appreciate it. Um, and I hope uh, you at home have enjoyed the session as well, found it informative. If you do have any questions at all, we're now open for a live uh, Q&A. Alternatively, um, you can get in touch with us through ITT Future. Thanks everyone, take care, bye-bye.